Mike, I went to a high school game where I didn't have to work, just got to hang out and see a, a huge atmosphere. Cal- yeah. Calico, Mannheim Central in Denver. This reminds me of back in the early, late 80s, early 90s when Conestoga Valley, Elizabethtown, Mannheim Central would pack high school fields three deep going around mm. the side. I don't say it was three deep on the sides, but it was about two deep. I think the place holds about 2,500. There was about 3,500 to 4,000 people there. Great atmosphere. Both bands, fantastic. <laughs> Calico does the A team song. I loved it. I'm glad we got the bands in. Got to get the bands in. It's like a football pre post game show here. This game was not as close as I thought it was going to be. I think as a lot of people thought it was going to be. Yeah, I read one account, somebody's called it a nail biter. I will not go that far. I never got to the nail biting stage. Um, well, I mean, it was 24 to 6. Yeah. Right? At yeah. one point, it yeah. was 24 to 6. At halftime. It was 14 to nothing and 24 to 6 at halftime. Right. But most of the scoring and most of the. Uh, you know, dramatics took place in the first half. Uh, this is uh, this is two of the in, in class AAA in Pennsylvania. These are two of the best teams in the state. We we think that they we think we believe they are, and they're in our league. And we think that there's a very good chance that they'll meet again in the district playoffs. Uh, and and the the other team out there is Bishop McDevitt in AAA, which is a real powerhouse in Harrisburg. But these two teams got it on, and Mannheim Central was the bigger. Apparently, now I wasn't there. I was out in Indiana with Penn State, but apparently, Mannheim Central is the bigger, more physical team, better in the trenches, and that won the day. I don't even say apparently; it was a fact. You yeah. could see you could see that they were bigger than Calico in most ways, and here's why I think it really played a factor. Calico started in the second half to get their offense flowing, and they got into the game more. And there was a couple plays where running backs looked like they had the corner on options, and the central defensive player would shed the block, throw the blocker off, and be right there where you thought it was going to be a big play for Gercalco, and it disappeared. That You could see the strength advantage right now, I think, from the summer of last year's team to the, what the Central did in the summertime, Mike, to yeah. this year. You could see how much bigger these guys got, and they were playing from last year when they lost Gercalco to this year's game. They had marked that counter because they came out ready to go from the beginning, and it looked like Calico was still trying to get their feet underneath them at the very beginning of this game. One team came out right in the shoots hot, and one team had to play a little bit of catch up here. Central scored the first four possessions of the game. Yeah. Now, there were two key plays here in that first half that might have made a difference, and we talked about that before we started doing this. Well, there was an interference call, which a lot of people thought was very questionable. I do it too. went against Cocalico, and then there was a holding call on uh, Jet Janis, the, the terrific quarterback for yeah. Cocalico. Had a long touchdown run, which was called back for a holding call, which probably it was an interior line thing that probably did not impact the play. It probably wasn't the reason that Janice right. was able to go. So, so you can look back and say, I'm sure Cocalico is looking back at that and saying, hey, it was 24 to 12 and this stuff happened. Uh, you know, we really, I'm sure they want to play man on Central again. Yeah, the thing was, Central came out early and hot and fast, but Cocalico, you see him start getting the game. The coaching staff really kept kept the ship steady, steady the ship. And Kentucky was getting back, it was 14-6 when the pass interference play came up. And I thought the person who had the best chance to catch it was the defender of Kukalico, and yet they're calling a pass interference on him. And then Janice's touchdown, great cutback, run across, he used almost the whole field. And they're calling this, this hold, I'm going, where? The guy is not even close to him. So momentum shifts yeah. on those kind of plays, you know what I mean? So this might be, this might be chapter one of two, or it might not be, but, but these teams really now are kind of biding time until the end of the regular season. These two teams are dominant against the, the teams in their in section. Triple A. Uh, yeah. With the possible exception of a Lamp Peter Strasburg, I would I would throw them in there because they're very well coached and a good program. But in general, you know, this maybe is a story to be continued because both of these teams are going to be playing with deep into November. Yeah, one quick thing with that. LS, I think, has, is, is rebounding well. They start off a little bit slow yep. this year. They're a little bit younger. Great coaching staff, but they're a little bit younger. How does Central respond? They just had the game. They probably marked their counter since last fall to play. Do they get back up again for LS? Because LS is undefeated in the section as well. From what I saw, Central can handle anybody in this section because of their strength, their brute force. After this LS game, which I think Central will get by, it's it's going to be mercy rules the rest of the way yeah. here, folks. It's Cocon- I, don't, I might have the order wrong, Mike, but it's Conestoga Valley, it's Ephrata, yeah. it's Solanco. To the playoffs, they're not going to yeah. be challenged. Stay okay? tuned. So, and this was a section title through Calico on the line, but also district seedings, because this might have kept Central away from playing McDevitt to the finals. It may have, and Calico might have to play Bishop McDevitt a little bit sooner now because of this.